ado, I know Tony has some words he'd like to share. He's currently, um, he's gotten the, the um, through his, uh, his computer lab and his facility, they've granted him the, the Zoom and the opportunity to platform to speak. So when you give him the platform to speak, Tony, speak. Thank you, Julio Medina, for your vision to have this. I mean, it was your vision that created this, and, and now it's just a snowball effect, rolling to bigger and bigger and greater things. And now, um, also, I want to thank, uh, for, give the chess, uh, Tyrone and Russell for allowing me to be a part. Um, and so I just want to share my story and, and then go off into how chess has really transformed my life and how chess was the tool that I used as a cognitive rehabilitative tool. So just to start off, um, I grew up in the, on the streets of Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, uh, my mom was uh, into drugs and uh, she was a madam, she was prostituting, you know, it was, it was just a very, very bad uh, uh, situation for me and my brother. Sometimes we didn't have uh, food to eat. I remember going to Safeway, the homeland, just to steal food and put it in my underwear and bring it home. I could still feel the coldness of the meat as I talk about it when I'm uh, on the Zoom with y'all. But over and over doing that, you know, it became something in my mind. It became ingrained in me that this is how I needed to be in order to survive back on these streets. So from a youth all the way into my adolescence, all the way into my adulthood, it was just a, a life of crime. Crime, drugs, uh, violence, things like that, which eventually led me to prison. Um, so I've been to prison two times. The first time I went to prison, I did a four-year stint from 18 to 22. You know, but during that whole time, there was people along the path that saw good in me. You know, I had teachers, I had football coaches, I had people that put me in programs. They saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself. Uh, I got a football scholarship, uh, Division One, couldn't pass my ACT, so I went to community college. But before I even stepped on campus, I committed a robbery charge, and that's what sent me to prison from 18 to 22. Went into prison, and I was around nothing but convicts, hardened criminals who, uh, there wasn't no creative programs like what we have here today. Uh, one night right now, this is called Wichita Work Police Program. They gave me the privilege to be here. I'm on the computer all day. I'm online. I'm on college. I go to the gym. I work out. I wear my own clothes. I got my own cell phone. You know, and I'm in prison. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and the, and the officers, the administration, the guys I'm doing time with, it's not even like I'm in prison. So I got one foot in and one foot out. I leave and go places and things. But, 18 to 22, this wasn't the type of prison that I was in. This, the type of prison I was in was behind the wall, maximum facility, full of, uh, you know, nickel, uh, dime slick hustles, you know, and, and, and so that intrigued me. I got up under them guys, and instead of me rehabilitating myself, wanting to be better, I got worse. But yet, still, I'm still writing home. I'm telling my mom, I'm telling my brother that I'm changing every day. I'm, it is getting better. I'm coming out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But it was all a lie, you know. So I got out at 22, walked on the football team at the community college there. Uh, for about six months, I flew straight. I put on that front, you know. But it wasn't in me. It wasn't ingrained in me through habit, you know. So eventually I fell off and I continued back into the same lifestyle I was before I left. And at 25, I committed an attempted first degree murder charge and here I sit. I'm sitting in prison. I was sentenced to 294 months incarceration. I've been here since 2003. So uh, when I came to prison, I was so angry, so, so angry. Uh, angry at myself, angry at the world. And I, I didn't even want to, I didn't value my life. You know, so um, I attempted suicide. Uh, by the grace of God, I'm still here today. Uh, God had a plan for me. And and I came out of that, and I was still angry, though. So I was fighting a lot, trapped in contraband, doing drugs, and and administration caught hold of me. They put me in segregation, and I spent my time down there. And it was that time down there being alone. I'm, at this time, I, I lost all family, all friends, all communication with the outside world. And all I had was the guys in my pod that we was doing time with in my chest for. So we would play over run, you know, and I would get beat and I got mad, I got mad. So I wanted to check out books and learn. Because I remember when I was a kid, someone told me, anything you ever wanted to know in life, you can get it in a book. You can find it in a book. So I started checking out chess books and I started getting better and better. 
So then we start taking snacks. Now, Chess became my bread and eat. I wouldn't get money sent in. You know, I wouldn't have nobody send me money orders, you know, looking out for me. So Chess became my bread and meat. You know, I'm gambling. Ten snaps a game. You know, sometimes more than that. But I say that to say this. The deeper I delved off into Chess, I learned that it's a deeper aspect to it. There's an opening game, there's a middle game, there's an end game. Well, at the same time I'm reading these chess books, I read a book called uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Cole. And in that book, he talks about beginning with the end in mind. And it's the same way in chess. When you develop your, your game, you got to find an opening that fits your style, fits what it is that you're good at. And I remember uh, uh, listening to you, Mr. Medina, about how we just didn't come into prison, didn't have no skills, didn't have no gifts, no talents. We had those things. We're very resilient people to begin with because we made it thus far. So I sized up myself and I found out where my strengths, weaknesses, my opportunities, and my threats were. And I found the opening that best suited me for this game of chess. And once I did that, I started blowing people off the board. Blowing them off the board. You know what I mean? So then, I start realizing I can apply these same skills to my life, you know? So it's all about thinking three, four, five, six steps ahead, you know, setting goals. So I got some things here, and this is a call it chess notation scorebook. What it is is anybody that you know about chess, you write all your moves down. Whether you win, lose, or throw, you go back over the moves and you study it. And you see what you did wrong. Well, same thing applies in life. These are all my journals from over the years. Day after day of journal. You know, what I did wrong, what I did right, where my successes were, where my shortcomings were. And I would read over them, figure it out, and get back to it. And it's the same way in chess. You know, one thing that we all got, the guys over there in this reentry program, Exodus, is we got resilience. We got critical thinking skills. We're strong-minded, you know, and we're able to make something out of nothing. You know, and as a rapper, he said, well, thank God for nothing because I made something out of it. You know what I mean? So I say that to say this. If we can get chess, if we get, get the chess, partnering with Exodus, get it in these prisons, chess is a cognitive rehabilitation tool that can change lives because it teaches you how to think. Most of us guys that went into the penitentiary, we were impulsive. We acted off impulse. We wasn't thinking about the moves we made. We just act, react, and not respond and react. But chess makes you slow down, especially when you want to win, and we all want to win. We want to win in life. We want to have money. We want to have cars. We want to have family. You know, we want to have jobs and careers. You know, And so in order to win, we got to set, we got to set a goal. What's the goal? What's your opening? What's your game plan? And that's what chess teaches you. you. You start with your game plan, your opening moves, getting your rooks, your knights, your bishops out, moving your pawns up, getting everything set up. And it's akin to your, your resources, your, your, your support team. Get all these things set up. Then you look at your strengths. Okay, like uh, the Exodus contract. I think that's what they call it the Exodus contract or the You come in and you figure out, okay, what is it? I'm a drug addict. Do I like to get high? You know, do I got family resources? Do I got job resources? Do I got skills? Am I college educated? Do I need a GED? Whatever it is, you figure, you size yourself up. You find out what your strengths are, boom. You find out what your weaknesses are, boom. But then you boom it up. You get it up. You know what I mean? Your opportunities. What are your threats? Well, I know I can't go over there because going over there would mean that I'm going to end up getting high again. Or I'm going to end up off in the games again, crime. You know, so then, once you get that set up, you move off into that middle game. You out there in the world. You, you're shaking and moving. You, you, you're busting moves, positive moves. You're going to see employers. You're having interviews. You know what I mean? You then, in the midst of all that, you got distractions coming in, but you got to stay focused. You got to stay focused on the, the goal, the task at hand. And then you move off into the end game. Now, when you get to the end game, there's a lot less pieces on the board. But does that mean that the game gets easier? Absolutely not. 
that means that it requires a lot more focus. As crazy as that may seem, you might think that when the opening game with all the pieces on the board, you need the most focus, but no, it's the end game because that's where it gets critical. But even in the midst of the end game, you may find yourself in the winning position. Do you take your foot off the gas? No, you keep it pressed to the metal because it's then when your opponent is working harder than he's ever worked to beat you. As soon as you take your foot off the gas, he's going to get an edge. You don't want your opponent to get an edge, you know? So when you get to the end game, that's where your focus is. And when you're playing chess and you go through this process over and over and over again, and then you have your chess notation books where you can study where you went wrong at, you get better, you get better. And seeing your progress, seeing how better you get, and then seeing it in real life, I start seeing it in the penitentiary. You know, I start seeing guys coming up to me, asking me for questions on problems that they was dealing with. And I was able to provide them with answers and solutions to problems because I've been there, I've done that, I understand. You know, not only that, I start seeing success with the way the staff treated me. You know, they start asking me questions. I start counseling them sometimes. You know, they start asking me, hey, what should I do about this? Hey, what should I do about that? You know, because chess, it helps you with critical thinking skills, abstract thinking skills, goal setting, patience, help you deal with anxiety. I found out when I was journaling, journaling that I had a self-sabotaging behavior. That was my issue. I, like I told you, I was on my way to college, played ball. What did I do? I robbed the Jewish school. I was on my way to graduate. What did I do? I did something where I had ISSS. I couldn't walk across the stage. So I was self-sabotaging my success. But I was, when, I, when I would have chess tournaments, I'm talking about I'd be across the board on the final, the championship game with a guy I beat numerous times in the game. Had his number. He couldn't stand the chance. But guess what? I would lose the game. And that would burn me so bad. So I would go back and I study, why am I doing it? And it dawned on me through my journal. Through my journal, I was sabotaging my success. I would purposely do something to trip myself up every time. So now, when I was playing chess, I'm in that tournament, I'm in that championship game, and I felt that anxiety bubbling up in me. And I, and I, but I didn't want to show it. So I'm like a duck on the top of the water. Everything's cool, but underneath them, I'm padding like a mug, you know, because that's an anxiety building up. So chest talk to me. Breathe. Chill. Calm down. You got this. Those self-affirmations. You got this. You can do this. You enjoy your position. When you're in a good position, sit back and look at it. Man, hey, I did this. Enjoy your position. And when you enjoy your position, it builds your confidence, your strength. It anxiety, it wanes, it goes away. And it gives you the courage to make the next move and the next move. And before you know it, check later. You reach over the board, you shake your hands. So man, if y'all got any questions for me, uh, I'm, I'm open to ask them. Uh, I was hoping to meet some of the guys there at Exodus so I could ask them some questions, you know. Goal setting is a big, big, big deal for me. You know, uh, one thing I learned about my goal setting is I look back over these journals and some things I wrote down, and I go, I'm talking about goals, I go back and I said, man, I accomplished that, I wrote it down way back here. And I'm talking about dreams. Almost unrealistic dreams, but they became true just because I wrote them down. It's something about your mind and your goals. You pro it's like this computer we all right now. You program it to do what you want it to do. And you're gonna go get that. You're gonna go get that. You gotta have the passion, you gotta have the desire, you gotta have the drive, you gotta have the energy, you gotta have the focus, you gotta have the support team, you gotta have people that love you and encourage you behind it, like you got there with these guys over here in this bench program. You know, when you got that type of strength and that power and that energy pushing behind you on top of what you already found out about yourself, you can do it. You can do it. So, so my overall hope 
dream, aspiration is to get checks into every penitentiary in the United States of America and use it as a cognitive rehabilitation tool to transform lives. I see that they do that all the way across the seas, you know, or way across the waters, you know. But we can do that right here in America. And I haven't seen nobody really tap into that. You know, uh, and then eventually we can get on with things like this and have chess tournaments from prison to prison. Mm -hmm. You know, international uh, uh, chess tournament day for prisoners. Uh, so yeah, that's that's our goal, that's our dream. And, and once again, thanks for having me. Thanks for giving me this platform to talk to you guys. And uh, yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you sharing. Um, my name is George Bailey, um, director of outreach here um, for our for Exodus. Hey, for, step our, a bit close. I think you real good for our Center for Trauma Innovation. But I, I work at Exodus. Um, I started as a participant. Um, a lot of the stuff that you said resonated with me. Um, I actually Word. started a program here, a chess program. It's called Russian Move Chess Club. Um, with the help of Julio and others, um, where we talk about chess and we relate it to real life situations. So, if we talk about awesome. you know losing a piece on the board, you talk about losing someone in real life or how to recover from either. And then you, we would sit down with the youth and have those type of discussions. Um, so, you know, just as Julio was saying, I would love for you to you know be a part of that. When when are you coming home? <laughs> All right. So my out date, my out date on the books right now is April 2025. You know, mm. but you know, I'm a man of faith. I believe God is able. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You know, but that's but that's my outlet right now. Well, it's a lot of people here that could that could um you know that have a testament and could to could tell you that you know they've gotten out before they expected to. Um, again, with the help of a lot of people here at Exodus, so you know we we look forward to working with you. Um, and I just, you know, I definitely want to commend you for even taking the time to really do that and really, you know, come here and speak. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, it's not, it's not me. This is something I'm passionate about. It's something that I live. You know, I breathe, man. Uh, man, I can do this, you know, any time of the day. It won't feel tired at all. I love this. This is what I do. You know what I mean? And, and like I tell the staff here, they say, man, you don't get out of there. They'll never come back. No, I'm, come, I'm coming back to Ben Tennis. <laughs> I'm gonna come back as a volunteer. I'm gonna come back and help change some things. Twenty-five years, you know, and I learned a lot, you know, and I, I want to give back. This is why I spent the majority of my life, man. But I'm not coming back in shackles and handcuffs. Right. I'm coming back with super keys, you know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, I wanted to ask you a question. You said that you was in Tulsa. Is that Morales? Yeah, Grajales. Joseph. You could just okay. say, can you step up a little bit? I can't hear you. No, I was just saying that you said you was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. No, right now I'm in Wichita, Kansas. But you said you was originally from Tulsa? Yes, yes. And yes. so your family all the, originally from Tulsa? All my family's originally from the north side of Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's like Black Wall yeah. Street. You all know the history. Black Wall yeah. Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the history. Black Wall Street was in that's Tulsa. Right, that's right. I know that's the right. history is deep. Wow. That's, that's what's right. up, man. Do you have any further questions for us, Tony? Well, you know, uh, I would like to know where the guys that, that, that are part of the program, do they stay there? Uh, do they just check in? I mean, how does it all work? Uh, anyone that's not in the temple? Okay, if I could jump in. Yeah, so I can jump in. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, how you doing? My name is Keith Gaffney. I, I work here in the Wilderness Program and helping out with the event. So what we did is we told our participants about the event. They're scheduled to come in at 4 o'clock, so they'll probably start arriving soon. Most of them come from our wilderness programs. That's, well, that's most of the staff who work here, uh, a lot of people went through the wilderness program. So a lot of our staff were our participants, um, and so our mission is twofold. It's about growing our participants, but also growing our staff. So a lot of these staff here have claimed that they're the winner today. Uh, <laughs> they're putting out there. <laughs> 
don't know about the sniffling, but their shit talking game is on point. <laughs> Time periods, so we made it work and gave him a platform. Exactly. And with your with your permission, you can do something on a bigger scale and you can schedule another time to get in front of the guys. Like I said tonight, I wanted you to be able to share your story today. But we can come and get it if they'll have us and do something when you have access to all the guys and everything people are here. So more events to come. And, and, and Tony, just real quickly, you know, just just an update about us. You know, so it's uh, we're 23 years old, and this is 23 years old. I did 12 years uh, doing my time there. I just saw the goodness in people. And I said, man, we got to create a platform to make this work. Uh, long story short, right now, it's 300 employees here. Got about a $50 million budget. We manage six hotels. We have a Center for Trauma Innovation. We have a, a mental health program. We have a wellness program. We have an alternative to incarceration program. A youth program. Did I miss anything? Mental health, workforce development. Uh, and again, uh, Outreach, and again, yeah, we house about 800 people right now that are coming from our state facility and Rikers Island, which is our local jail. Um, so definitely, man, it's an honor talking to you. I just wanted you to know a little bit of the stuff that we do here. Um, I think my biggest uh, claim to fame is to say 85% of the staff has sat in the chairs you sat in. So, you know, right. for us, it's, it's, it's important that, you know, we highlight that to know, you know we're more than the worst woman of our lives. So I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. And again, open invite to New York. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. And Tony, yes. 20, 22 years ago, I was one of the first participants of Exodus. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>